the challenge is, is it going to be my way or God's way? And that's what this, this, what this book is all about. And so Robert Morris, he starts the book by telling this story about how he was an evangelist. They give him a, the, the job of an evangelist is he would come to uh, a, a church free of charge, really. They would just take up a love offering. And he said the challenge of that is you would show up and you, and you never knew what your paycheck looked like. Now, you, you probably never think about that when you're in the workday world. You know at the end of the week, if you work 40 hours, 50 hours, 60 hours, what your paycheck is going to look like. So if you can imagine the difficulty of really just trusting God to take care of all your finances. Well, he and his wife had sat down and they had a budget. And they, and they knew what they needed to make every week or roughly every month to, to cover all their expenses. And he said... This one month, they had one church that they were going to, and as they went to this one church, they, they knew the number that they had because it was the o only church they were going to for that entire month. He said so that they, they, they got there, they had the three, four-day revival at the end of it, they, they got their paycheck, and they said, he, he said he was so excited to, to look at that check, and what they had, had, what they had raised in the love offering was the exact amount that they needed to be able to pay all of their, their, their bills for the month, right? You ever had those instances where God shows up and you and, and, and isn't it weird how we don't really get excited when God does what he does. We're more relieved, like, woo! Oh, well, thank you, God. I'm sure glad that you took care of that. And he said, but here's, here's where the real difficulty came in. Here, here, here was the problem. It's, it's one thing to stand in front of everybody and, and to say, trust God with everything. When God promised you to give, you're, you're going to give. And that was what the message was. He, said, he got down. He and his wife were sitting in the car, and they were, they were sitting at the back of the church, and they're celebrating that, that God came through again, right? And he said, then there was a still small voice that said to him, I want you to endorse the check and give it to the missionary. Mm -hmm. Right? Those are the instances where we start to argue with God. Or, or a lot of times if you're like me, you're like, get thee behind me, Satan. Right? <coughs> because you're like, it just doesn't make sense in, in, in my mind and in my heart that God would want me to give away the very thing that he just blessed me with. And he said, so he stood there for, for several seconds, several moments, saying, what? What do I do? And he said, well, if you're going to preach it, you need to live it. So he said he endorsed the back of it. He walked over to the missionary. He handed him the check. And he said, hey, I hope this helps. I, I, I pray that God's going to use it in a mighty way. Well, he doesn't talk about the conversation that took place in the car. I can imagine there were some choice words that was probably shared between he and his wife, right? But he said that they were invited to go out for pizza afterwards. And so they get to this, this, this pizza joint. And he said there was a, a very well-dressed man that came and sat down next to him. He said, Robert, I really appreciate your message today. So well, thanks so much. He said, I know this is going to be a, a pretty intrusive question, but how much money did the, did, did, did the church collect for you? So he told him the number. He said, is that going to cover all your expenses? He said, oh, yeah, it's going to cover all expenses. He said, can I see that check? Remember, he's already signed it. He's already given it away. He said, well, and he said he thought it was okay to tell a little white lie because you just don't know what to do in some of these situations. And instances. He said, well, my wife has it. He said, well, that's okay. Can you go get her from her? I really want to just, I just really want to see that check. So he said, okay. He walks over. He leans over to his wife. Hey, honey, how are you doing? Is the pizza okay? So he has this conversation. Not about the check because he's given it away. You know, how, how, how do you get the check back with somebody you've already given away? So, okay, honey, thanks. And so he goes and he sits back down. And he continues on in the conversation thinking that at some point this guy's just going to leave him alone, let him off the hook. And so he says, it, it's, it's in the car. It's, it, it's, that's where it's at. And he said, okay, well, it's in the parking lot, right? You can just go get it in the car and show it to me. And so, so he sat there for several more beats thinking, now what do I say? He said, so he kind of stammered and stuttered a little bit. He said, well, to, to, be, to be perfectly honest with you, before he said anything, this guy looks at him and said, you gave it away, didn't you? And he said, yeah, I did. He said, okay. And he, slid it, he slides him a check across the table. He said, I want to make sure that you were obedient before I was obedient. So he opened the check, and it was about three, four times the amount of what the church had collected that day. We, 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 we look at that, and we hear these stories, right? And, and I look at these stories, and I go, man, that's great for him. But how many times do we look at it and go, I, I, I wonder how much more God has for me if I'm just obedient. Because logically, I read that story, right? And I, I immerse myself into the story. And if that would have been me and God would have said, hey, give that money, well, I just would have started laughing. <laughs> That's a good one, God. I mean, you literally looked at me. This is, this is how we're going to pay all the bills. I mean, if we give this away, what's going to happen? And 
God said, is it my way or is it your way? Well, I say I want to do it your way, God. Okay, if you want to do it your way, then sign the check and hand it over. If you have your Bible, turn to Matthew chapter 6. If you have your Bible, turn to Matthew chapter 6. And what's going to happen is we're going to hit big chunks of, of, this, of this chapter 6. Because, again, what's going to happen is you're going to hear a lot of talk of money again today. And, and we'll get to that. But the reason why we're going to talk about money, we're going to take this whole month to talk about money, is because there's eight, 800 verses. 800 verses that Jesus talks about money. He talks about money more than anything else. Except the kingdom of God. You say, well, why is that? I think because it's a forever problem. Right? Because we stand at the crossroads when God tells us to do one thing when it comes to our area of finances, and we're going, but I really want to do something else. And God said, you want me to be Lord of your life? And yes, Lord, I want you to be Lord of my life. In every single way, yes, in every single way. But then sign the check and send it over. Well, not in that way. In Matthew chapter 6, it says this. Verses 1 through 4. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. When you give to the needy, don't announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites and the synagogues are on the streets to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they receive the reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father who, who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Put your finger there make sure you come back to me and listen because there's a lot of principles that Jesus is talking about here. The very first one that I picked up, the first one that I, I circled, it says, when you give to the needy. Did you notice that? Yeah. It doesn't say if you give to the needy. That, that, that's, that, that's a big monumental shift. Now, if he would have said, if you give to the needy, this is what I want you to do. He doesn't say that. So there comes the expectation that when we give, that we have these resources that God has given to us. And he says, I want you to take it and I want you to serve other people, especially those who are in need. And, and, and you start to look at this and we go, well, it kind of sounds countercultural, right? Because I, I, I watch television. Anybody else ever watch television? And there's this new question that's on television that says, will you have enough money to, are you going to outlive your retirement? Right? And you see all these people, and they don't really have a worry about their retirement until they see that question, and they start going, <gasps> and we start to worry, right? Yes? Right? I, I, I watch television, and, and I've realized that this is just kind of the function of television, because I hate commercials, because it's the agenda of what they're trying to sell, right? And have you ever noticed it's, it's never good enough? Like, I, I, I remember when I first got a television in my room, and it was like a 24-inch TV. And it was, like, awesome, but it had, like, this, this big thing. Remember when TVs used to have the big thing? And, and I remember my, my grandma Mirka's house, they had this really nice, like, kind of cabinet that the big television used to sit on. Then they had that little flat-screen TV that sits on top of the old television. Right? It's never good enough, right? The, 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 just the functionality of, of, of the way commerce works is they don't want you to have the 24 inch, they want you to have the 54 inch. And it can't be just the 54 inch. Now we have a 64 inch. Now 64 inch plasma screen. And it isn't just plasma screen, but now it's an HD. Woo! And if you really want the ice cream with the cherry, you have to get it in 3D. But then you have to buy the glasses that go along with it, right? Then after you get all that stuff in the race, and you're like, right? And have you ever noticed how often the, the, there's, a, there's a new technology coming out? It's like the iPhone 4, now it's the iPhone 5, now it's the iPhone 6, it's the iPhone 6 Plus. You're like, really? I didn't think the iPhone 6 Plus, and I'm hearing this iPhone 7? It's like, man! It's the deceitfulness of both. We, we think, well, if I get the next thing, right? If, if I just work a little harder, if I just get a little bit more, then, then, then I'll be okay. I, 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 I see, and, and, and again, like, I, I even have to, like, almost repent, like, re, like, preaching this message today, because I'm going to stand up here and say something, and if you read the paper, you're going to be like, uh, did he not get the paper anymore? Because the thing I'm going to say is, most people want to give if you put my name on the side of the building, right? I, I, I'll, I'll give if you take my picture and put it in the paper, right? So that's where, if you saw, we did the walkathon, we gave money, it was, 
Yes, we didn't do it just to get a picture in the paper. We actually would have done it differently if it would have played out like that. But most people, when you give, you want to, most people, right? Culture says, well, if you give it now, it's going to be the name on the side of the building so that you can be lauded and patted pat on the back. And like, look how philanthropic this, this person is. And Jesus is saying, no, 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 no. Like, when I'm teaching this message, I want to flip, I want to flip it on its head. That means don't even let the right hand know what your left hand is doing, which means don't let nobody else know what's going on. Why? Because there was a group of people, notice the Sadducees and the Pharisees, the Jewish ruling council, and they would walk, when they would go to give their money, and be like, right? They would walk up, they would throw the money, they would play around, and everybody would be like, ooh. They gave a lot of money. Right? I mean, could you imagine... If, 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 if we announced every week, you know, we would have like the, the top ten givers like on our wall up there and so you'd be like, oh, I made it number four, right? And we'd pat you on the back, hey, I believe in you. I bet, I bet you can get number three next week, right? Right? And then if you're number one, we say, like, hey, class, we put a little crown on your head, right? And Jesus says, if you want to do that and you get pat on the back and high five and hug because you gave, that's your reward to God. When you walk down the road and people step out of the way because they know that you're coming, that's your reward. But if you want something so much more precious, if you want something that's, that's out of this world, give to somebody who's in need and don't tell them. Why? Because then God, who sees what's done in secret, will reward you. Countercultural. Right? If you have your Bibles, go back to Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 to 24. Because there's another story that Jesus tells before we get to that passage about a widow who might. Really, if you would look at today's standard, she probably gave about half a penny. Not, not even a full penny, it was like half a cent. Her two mites were equal about half a penny. Really, that's not much money in the grand scheme of things, right? But Jesus says, that lady who snuck up there, put in her two mites, and then snuck back away, gave more than everybody else who was doing it with the trumpets. Why? Because everybody else, most people, we look at our budget, right? And we say, how much can I afford to give? He said, most people give out of their excess. She said, he said, this lady, this widow, when she gave her half a cent, she gave out of her poverty. Jesus continues on. Do not store for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy where thieves break in and steal. But store for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and vermin do not destroy where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, then your whole body is full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, the whole body is full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate one and love the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and Money. Money can buy a bed, but it can't buy sleep, amen? amen. Money can buy amusement, but it can't buy happiness, amen? Money can buy companions, but it can't buy friends, amen? amen. Money can buy books, but it cannot buy brains, amen? amen. Money can buy a house, but not a home, amen? Money can buy medicine, but not health, amen? amen? Money can buy flattery, but not respect, amen? amen? See, it's the deceitfulness of wealth, right? We have this idea of money, we have this idea of finances, and what Jesus is saying is, let's just flip it, right? So I, I, God, I feel like God gave me this, 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 this word picture, because that's kind of how I think, right? And I have this idea that we walk around kind of with a cup or, or with a bowl, and, 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 and we, 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 kind of, we, we kind of look at people with alms, right? Alms, the poor, alms, right? And we kind of do the same thing with God. Um, can, God, can, can you look, we sing songs like that. You guys know the song, you know the analogy, here's my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord, right? 